Are you looking for an athletic scholarship? You're in the right place. This is the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship Podcast, the longest running podcast on recruiting and athletic scholarships. We're here to help your family navigate the recruiting road all the way to an athletic scholarship. He's a recruiting expert and a dad of two college athletes. He has a wealth of experience to share. Here's Recruit Me CEO, Brent Hanks. Welcome to episode 308 of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. The Athletic Scholarship Podcast is one of the many free and inexpensive resources that will help you, whether you are a recruited student athlete or the parents of a recruited student athlete, get that athletic scholarship. This podcast is great for any student athlete going into their freshman year of high school, all the way up to the student athlete that's a senior in college or even in junior college. With all the transfer portal and leftover COVID recruiting challenges, this resource can benefit many student athletes. The Athletic Scholarship Podcast is good for any sport at any level of play. Go to recruit-me.com to get your recruiting education started or get it restarted. Last week's episode of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast, episode 307, features the hardest and the most important step in recruiting, and that is to just start. Listen to this episode and all the past episodes at recruit-me.com or on your favorite podcast app. Last week's episode was a lesson from my past car business days that I related easily to the recruiting education world. Here is another piece of my past that will help you on your recruiting journey. I don't remember if I came up with this philosophy or if I stole it from someone wiser than me. But for years, I felt that most decisions were and are made based on a person's ideas of how time, ego, or money will affect their lives. I use this time, ego, or money theory for myself and to help our employees and our customers make decisions. There are many definitions of time according to dictionary.com. There is time like past, present, and future. There is a limited period or interval like youth is the best time of life. There are periods of history like prehistoric times or high school times. There is a period of work for an employee like working hours or days or an hourly or daily pay rate. Sometimes you serve time in the army or have leisure time like a vacation. Time can even be the tempo for music or a march. The definition of ego according to dictionary.com is the I or self of any person. A person as thinking, feeling, and willing and distinguishing itself from the selves of others and from objects of its thought. Another definition would be self-esteem or self-image or feelings. And the definition of money, according to Dictionary.com, is any circulating medium of exchange, including coins, paper money, and demanding deposits. Being in the car business or sales of any kind, your scoreboard is your paycheck. How many cars you sell or how much money you make. I learned for myself that there was a correlation between time, ego, and money in my selling performance. I entered the car sales world to make more money. The opportunity to go from a minimum wage, 40 to 45 hour a week job to a sales commission job where I could substantially raise my pay was a driving force to make the change. I actually started selling cars during the summer after my freshman year of college. So instead of washing cars, driving cars for dealer trades, mowing, and any other odd jobs at the dealership, I grabbed some dress shoes, dress pants, dress shirts, and a tie and started selling. I spent any free time training on how to sell, how to ask questions, and how to fill out all the paperwork for a sales transaction. I found out that my hours of work went from Tuesday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. when I was doing just the odd jobs to Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. or whenever the customers were done. In sales, I had two half days off, one in the morning and one in the afternoon, one morning off and a different afternoon off. I also learned how awkward and intimidating it could be for an 18-year-old to ask a 40-year-old person for $20,000, this was back in 1986, to buy a car. So money stayed important during those first couple years. But as I learned, time became more of a value, and I learned my ego, both positively and negatively, came into play very quickly. I was young, it was summer, and I was college age. My time became more important to me. Time with my girlfriend, time playing baseball or softball, and time going to the lake was diminished. The physical and mental strains of selling cars and working with customers and only getting paid if I sold a car made time more precious. There were times that I chose to sleep in and not go in early. 
or not stay late, or I might take a longer lunch break than I needed to, instead of going in and prospecting for customers or doing research on new cars or trucks that we had. So, as I started selling, the drive for money was lessened, and ego and the need for time took a larger presence. As I sold cars and asked customers to buy from me, I used time, ego, and money to make me and my cars or trucks more attractive. Prices tend to be the same for like products. So the more expensive the vehicle, the more I could appeal to a customer's ego. Prestige and image can be a big deal to a customer. Chevrolet does not have many real expensive cars or prestigious cars, other than the Corvette and the Camaro, maybe. So I used our personal touch and our personal service to try to convince customers to buy from us. I made sure the customers knew that I would help them save time during the sale and after the sale. Time-saving sales techniques, like locating the vehicle they wanted at another dealership up to 300 miles away, or no hassle or no pressure financing or paperwork. After the sale, I provided a loaner car when you needed work done in the shop. Or, if you worked in Ozark, I would take a loaner to your work, get your car serviced, and deliver it back to you before you got off work. I made sure the customer knew that I would save them time and stress for years after the sale. Plus, if I did a good job, both of us would save time and stress on the next sale. I really saw the time, ego, or money take effect as I became a manager. I worked with both salespeople and technicians more. Money, again, is the most apparent driver to most employees. When a sale wasn't made, I might ask the salesperson some questions about the customer, and usually the salesperson didn't ask the right questions to the customer for the sale. Usually when a salesperson shortcuts the sales process, it is because they are either uncomfortable asking questions because they didn't know the product, or they didn't get to know the customer well enough, or they get cocky and shortcut straight to the do you want to buy the car question too soon. So, low esteem ego or too high self-esteem ego can affect your performance. One example that money doesn't always drive someone was we had a used vehicle that we had had for a long time. So I put a $500 minimum commission on it. So if the salesperson sold the vehicle, he or she made $500. A customer made an offer to the salesperson to buy the so targeted vehicle. And because of the salesperson's ego, he said that he couldn't accept the offer and the customer left. The salesperson should have written a buyer's order with the customer's offer and taken it to the sales manager and allowed the manager to decide on whether he would accept the offer. If the manager did take the offer, the salesperson would have made $500 on the sale. We had the salesperson call the customer's cell phone and tell them that we would accept the price offered, and the customer came back and bought the car. Because the salesperson didn't go through the process correctly and made a decision that wasn't his to make, we only paid him a $200 commission on the sale. His ego overrode his desire for money, and he made a bad decision on how to handle the sale and the customer. We had many other more positive examples of ego. Many of them pertain to someone winning a contest and getting the recognition from the contest. And from this, I came to believe that time is a more important driver of how we, as human beings, perform. Most of us work for pay and want to be paid a good day's wage for the time worked. Then we take our pay and we pay for things that we want and things that will save us time or maybe fill our ego. Things like a place to live, air conditioning, a car, a stylish shoe. As we get some money, we spend more on time, vacations, golf, concerts, hiking, biking, or other hobbies. I mentioned sales contests earlier, and we got a better response when we offered time rather than money. Most of the salespeople were more motivated when we offered a day off rather than $100 or $200. Also, salespeople would have the opportunity to come in on their days off and get additional sales, but most of the time, they took the time off. (laughs) I did too. Time with family, time working on the house, or time running errands are all valuable. So after all that business stuff about time, ego, and money, how does it all relate to recruiting? Well, I believe money is the initial reason student athletes and parents want to play college. A full ride scholarship is the money. As you find out in past episodes of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast, and you find out in the Recruit Me 3.0 Athletic Scholarship System, There are very few actual full-ride athletic scholarships. There are six NCAA Division I sports that are guaranteed full-ride athletic scholarships if you get an offer. Division I men's basketball, Division I women's basketball, Division I-A football, Division I women's tennis, volleyball, and gymnastics. 
Listen to episodes 216 and 217 for more scholarship information. You can listen to those episodes on your favorite podcast app or on recruit-me.com in the podcast tab. These are considered headcount sports and are always full-ride athletic scholarships. Some JUCOs can give a full-ride scholarship, too. Most scholarships are given in equivalency sports. Equivalency sports hand out partial scholarships. In NCAA Division I and Division II sports and NAIA sports, each sport gets a predetermined number of athletic scholarships to spread over a team. An example is baseball, 11.7 athletic scholarships to spread over 40 players. NCAA Division III sports do not give any athletic scholarships. At all levels, you can get academic scholarships, merit-based scholarships, need-based scholarships, or local scholarships to help pay for college. Full rides are possible, but an opportunity to play, an opportunity to go to college, an opportunity to go to a college that you may not have been aware of, and an opportunity to get a great education, both in and out of the classroom, are all benefits of sports in college. A family may also feel the need to spend a lot of money to get recruited. I feel a smaller investment money-wise is the way to go to get recruited. Many families spend thousands on recruiting services because they feel anxiety and they think they can buy the silver bullet to getting a full ride. Recruit Me offers many free and inexpensive resources that guide you through the recruiting process. The best time to start getting recruiting resources is as you go into your freshman year of high school. Getting started then will not only save you time, but will save you money down the road and will settle your ego or settle questions in your mind as you go through and control your DIY recruiting journey. Our ego in recruiting can sometimes keep us from asking questions to college coaches or high school or club coaches. Ego can keep you from evaluating your own talent or your son or daughter's talent to see what level of college sports would fit the best. Ego may keep us from looking at or doing research on non-Division I schools. Ego isn't always negative, though. A positive, well-educated ego can lead you toward asking questions, understanding your abilities, and accepting your wants versus needs to help you make a good decision when the time is right. Speaking of time, from all of this, I think that time is the most important and influential aspect of the three items of time, ego, and money. Getting educated on recruiting will put you on a timeline. Each season of your sport has different items, or steps to do to both prepare you to be recruited and then to be recruited. Saving time by not jumping into camps or showcases too early is a result of getting educated. By not sending emails or filling out recruiting questionnaires too early, you are saving time also. Visiting college campuses when you travel on vacation or travel to meets, matches, tournaments, or camps and showcases are a great way to save time and help you make a good college decision when the time comes. I truly believe if you do the work early, research, campus drive throughs make a list of parameters of what you want in a college experience, then you will save time by being ready when the action really starts. Having questions for coaches ahead of time is a time saver and makes you look mature and that you really want to play for that coach. By being able to narrow down what you are looking for and by being able to evaluate your skills to a level of play, those two things will not only save you time during your recruitment, but by choosing the right school, you will be less likely to change or transfer schools later. Our ultimate goal is for you to make the best choice of college, whether it be JUCO or a four-year college, and stay there and play your sport for four years and to get your degree. Staying at your choice of college will save you both time and money. This doesn't always work 100% of the time, but the percentage of people staying at their original choice certainly goes up. No matter where you are in the recruiting process, recruiting education is an essential source of saving your time, ego, and money. Thank you for listening this week. I encourage you to share this episode and the Athletic Scholarship Podcast with others in your family and other student-athletes and family that are getting started in the recruiting process or are in the recruiting process. Share with your high school or your club and anyone in any sport that is wanting to play a sport in college. Send me any questions or comments about the podcast or about recruiting at brent at recruit-me.com. A great way to get started on the recruiting education trail is to get the free recruiting power pack at recruit-me.com. Join me next week on your favorite podcast app or at recruit-me.com to get another 15 minutes that will change your athletic scholarship future.